Oh, it's great, man. You know, just being a part of the community, seeing what's going on in the community, meeting, meeting people all the time is great. You know, the Spurs do a great job of getting us involved. So, um, you know, anytime we can get out here and be a part of stuff like this is great. Yeah, Zach Collins loves to give back to the San Antonio community in big board sports. Ahead of his third season with the Spurs, power forward Zach Collins spent some time at the newly renovated Antioch Sports Complex and Community Center last night. This renovation was completed through Spurs Give and Frost Operation Renovation Grant of $100,000. Zach was part of the ribbon cutting ceremony, and then he stuck around to help work a volleyball game. During a recent podcast of Richard Jefferson, Collins said the Spurs have held some mini camps and that all the younger players were very involved, which is certainly a good thing to help them get ready for the regular season. Great. When you have such a young team, anytime you can get together, get some reps in together, help them understand the game a little bit more in the NBA, and um, especially with all the new guys coming in, like it, it, it's huge. It's huge. And, and even for the, the older guys on our team, we don't have a lot of older guys, but guys that have been here for a while, it's the more reps you can get in the offseason, it's going to make the season a lot easier. So it, it's been big time. Zach and the Spurs will tip off the preseason Monday, October the 9th at the OKC Thunder. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have the overall number one ranked defense in the NFL, and they've done it without the services of safety Donovan Wilson, who's been out with a calf issue that he suffered in training camp. But the good news is Wilson was a full participant in practice today as he looks to make his 2023 regular season debut. Last season, he led the boys with 101 total tackles to go along with nine quarterback hits, five sacks, two forced fumbles, and a pick. Coach McCarthy was asked, what does he miss from not having Donovan on the field? Well, Don was an impact player. I mean, you know, he, he, you know, his teammates feed off of his play style. Um, you know, he's a big part of our standard of, of, of how we play on defense. Um, so it'll be great to get him back out there. And you know, end of the week, we'll see exactly where we are. But it'll be, I mean, you feel you feel Dono when he's on the field. Now, if coach is talking that way, it certainly sounds like Wilson could play Sunday, 3:25 p.m. at the Arizona Cardinals in Dallas is favored by 12. In college football, the Texas State Bobcats are 2-1 and one after beating Jackson State 77-34 on Saturday. The Bobcats' 77 points are its most scored since it registered a program record 78 versus Meridian College in 1920. Now the Bobcats are favored by 17 points to beat Nevada Saturday night. I'm, I mean, you know, if you ask the guys on the team, they probably don't even know that. Um, you know, I think they do a really good job. Uh, their head coach does a really good job. Uh, he's going to have those guys prepared. They're going to play extremely hard. You know, they'll be ready. Um, you know, they played really well this past week. And um, so those guys will be, you know, probably have some confidence to them and, and um, that type of deal. So. Two and one Texas State will host 0 and three Nevada Saturday night at six at Bobcat Stadium. Boy, they're favored by that much over Nevada. Yeah, 17. Wow, man. New era. And Sam Marcus. That's right. What do they say? Eat him up. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I've heard that go. around the newsroom. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Case that investigates is coming up next. It's intended to give people in Bear County a second chance at a clean criminal record. It's called pretrial diversion, but a months long probe by Case Head Investigates found many defendants who took part in that program soon went back to breaking the law, including some violent offenses. Dylan Collier has more on these failures and why the district attorney says expanding that program was the right thing to do. <laughs> In January, an off-duty San Antonio police officer followed, then detained a woman in the 6,000 block of Ridge Glade. He suspected her of driving while intoxicated. Marissa Martin, seen here in dash camera footage of her DWI arrest, told police she'd only had three drinks. The damage to her vehicle... S-T-D-U and Martin's subsequent failing of a field sobriety test told another story. A Texas DPS lab would later confirm her blood alcohol level that night was .163, more than twice the legal limit to drive a car. As Martin was taken to jail, she repeatedly threatened the arresting officer's job. But just know when I call my grandma and I tell her that you arrested me when I was already f***ing parked, yeah, you're done and left him a mess to clean up in the back of his patrol vehicle. 
Just over two years earlier, Bear County records show Martin has successfully completed pre-trial diversion in an unrelated evading arrest case, a move that not only kept her from having a felony conviction on her record, but would have allowed her to erase the case altogether through expunction. A similar deal was given to Anthony Salazar after his felony drug arrest in 2019. But after getting a dismissal through pretrial diversion in late June of 2021, Salazar turned his second chance into arrest for DWI with an elevated blood alcohol content, family violence, felony theft, and felony assault of a pregnant person. Salazar is now a convicted felon on court-ordered probation through late July of 2025. Pretrial diversion is a essentially a contract between the prosecuting attorney and the accused person. Defense attorney Patrick Ballantyne spent 11 years as a Bear County prosecutor. He says pretrial diversion, or PTD, is usually offered to defendants with minimal or no criminal history. And violent offenses almost always disqualify a person. Case that investigates spent months scrutinizing nearly 700 felony cases since 2018 in which defendants applied for the program. 77 cases are considered failures. 14 defendants reoffended after completing the program. 33 criminal cases were reopened after PTD was unsuccessful, and 30 cases showed no public records after PTD was unsuccessful. Well, of course, it depends on the type of offense. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez concedes that prosecutors in a majority of those last 30 cases elected not to refile charges. Still, for Gonzalez, it's one of the uh, uh, programs that I'm most proud of. Pretrial diversion has a success rate of over 70 percent, giving PTD the lowest rate of recidivism compared to all other court outcomes in Bear County. We don't want to give somebody PTD and then a year later they commit a murder or sexual assault or some violent um, you know, offense. Amanda Gonzalez was given pretrial diversion on a felony drug case in May of 2021, but less than a year later picked up two new felony drug charges in less than a week. Then in February was accused of stabbing her boyfriend with a butterfly knife. Gonzalez was sent to a state drug treatment facility last month after pleading no contest to aggravated assault with a deadly weapon earlier this summer. You're never going to have a program that is 0% recidivism. I mean, because this is a human system. The criminal justice system is a human system and it's subject to human failures. For Case That Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. Gonzalez says he has expanded the county's pretrial diversion program tenfold during his time in office. PTD was offered in 360 felony cases last year alone. We'll be right back. Imagine getting a call from a loved one desperately in need of money, and before you know it, you're shelling out thousands of dollars. Thanks to artificial intelligence, that voice on the phone may not be who you think. Yeah, Katrina Weber shows us how easy it was for some people to fall victim to these high tech schemes. See, there's one now. Unfamiliar numbers automatically get the rejection button these days. But one of those calls last month nearly cost this man who didn't want to use his name more than just time. A voice said, Grandpa. And, and I said, TK? Because the voice was the voice of my grandson. He says he heard a desperate cry for help, that he had injured a pregnant woman in a crash. So he's got my attention right away. And he say, I'm in jail. After another call with what he thought was an attorney, he rushed to his credit union, ready to withdraw thousands for his grandson's bail. Luckily, a teller warned it could be an elaborate scheme. It's so convincing. I mean, there was nothing in the voice that to tell me that it's not him. I was extremely surprised. In the first time, I did not believe it. Mohammed Rana also had a costly call recently. The business owner assumed a security system was all he needed, only crooks found a way into one of his stores on the phone. All the money, almost $3,000 exactly. Rana says a mystery caller got a worker to empty out the register and more. She was sure she was talking to you. She was 100% sure. As it turned out, both cases involved artificial intelligence and something called voice cloning. 
With AI, fraudsters can clone or copy people's voices from videos they post to social media. They're pretty believable. And then you're typing in what you want the voice print to say. Jason Witte, the chief security officer at USAA, says no one at his bank has been hit, but he's worried more and more people could be. The technologies that are underpinning this are actually getting a lot better and they're getting a lot more accessible to the public. In case you have any doubt, look what I was able to get right at my fingertips within seconds. It's an app for entertainment purposes that lets you put words into the mouths of celebrities. I love watching Katrina Weber on KSAT 12 News. Most people think, well, that can't happen to me, but believe me, believe me, it's about all about emotion. Both he and Rana hope others will learn from them and hang up on voice cloning con men. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now, there actually is more you can do to avoid becoming a victim of voice cloning. For tips, check out the story on our website, KSAT.com certainly scary use of AI. Yeah, that is so freaky. And in those instances where somebody thinks it's their loved one, I've heard the tip, hang up and call that person right, right back. So that's something else to keep in mind. All right, meanwhile, let's look at the weather outside. You know, maybe that's why we're talking about AI and voice cloning because there's not a lot to talk about weather-wise. <laughs> Maybe this is a robot and it was me just yesterday. There's no there's no way you can no, clone this Adam is the Kasky. Real I'm just thing. saying there's no way. You yeah. never know when that high kick's coming. <laughs> <laughs> one, no, day, I'm one day your shoe's gonna fly off, and no, I hope I am here for it. You're you're waiting for my pants to rip. That's what you're want, waiting for. I didn't want to say that, but it's true. <laughs> so true, I love it. <laughs> 97 right now, 88 at 9 o'clock, midnight 81. I'm high kicking because guess what? I'm gonna be fishing before you know it. Yeah, I got a fishing trip coming. Okay, I did some research, back to weather. Uh, record high temperatures set this summer, just daily record highs. Something we haven't looked into. I've got the stats coming right up. A man with a violent criminal history and out on parole is accused of terrorizing a Stone Oak neighborhood. Video shows Christopher Rodriguez walking up to a door with a gun. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says he also banged on the window of another home. Rodriguez is back in custody now after a woman told deputies that he punched her. The Atascosa County Sheriff's Office arresting a second suspect in connection to a murder last month. Sheriff David Soward says 18 year old Kaysen Cash Raymond was arrested for the alleged murder of Ricky Bernal Jr. The 20 year old Joseph Saiz was also arrested last week in connection to the killing, both now facing murder charges. Tonight, police are searching for the person who they say shot and robbed a man last night. This happened on Jackson Keller Road, not too far from Lee High School. SAPD says the victim was shot a few blocks away and drove to a nearby apartment complex for help. That man is expected to recover and no arrests have been made. And that's your 60 second recap. All right, we're going to talk about albums coming up a little bit later in the buzz. But first albums, yeah, we're going to talk about records. Oh, nice. that was actually a good one. Good. It was good. That was actually a good one. You backed into it, but I, uh, I see you know, what you did. Sometimes, you know, what do they say? Even a blind squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's good. All right, we're going to take this track and run with it right here. You know, we have talked a lot about our summer, meteorological summer, June, July, August. That's how we keep records in meteorology in those three month increments. We don't go by the astronomical uh, seasons and all the records that we broke. You know, the hottest summer on record, the hottest month ever was August. Most 100 degree days at 74, the most consecutive 100 degree days and so on and so forth. But what about just daily? record high temperatures. So for every day we have a record high 26 days this summer, June through August, we tied or broke that record high. That's 28% of the days this summer we had record high temperatures. Not so many in June because the first week was below average and even a little damp. And then we had that high moisture content with the very high humidity throughout June. But as we dried out and even the ground dried out and the drought set in, that's when we really started to break those record high temperatures, especially June and particularly into August. 
Usually drought in the dry ground uh, leads to those hotter than normal temperatures and in this case record breaking. Now going ahead, we'll be in the upper 90s next several days, 98 Thursday and Friday, 97 Saturday and Sunday. By Monday, a subtle change down to about 93 for the high temperature that's still below our average of 89 and that comes with a glimmer of hope for some rain and one day in particular is standing out to show a little bit more potential than the rest. So let's talk about it. The Ridge, Big Blue H, upper level high, still influencing our weather center just off to the west of us in Mexico. The active weather, this big disturbance, this is what we need. This is going to be a big wound up upper level low pressure system just barreling its way through the northern tier of the U.S. over the next several days. It's not going to dig southward because it can't. These highs, the high always wins and it blocks out those disturbances. So the good rainfall is going to be across the northern tier of the U.S. and even up and down the midsection of the country. Not to mention the mid-Atlantic and even the Carolinas getting in on some tropical moisture. We have some potential out there. It's just right now isolated activity we're expecting late Sunday and even into Monday. As for the tropics, we have Nigel. Category one. I always feel like it sounds like such a distinguished hurricane. Nigel. Yeah. Category one, Nigel, Very right? British. Very British. Yeah. Max is state. I bet Will knows him. Uh, anyway, so that's an inside <laughs> joke. He's from Britain. Will's on our crew as we always do that. Okay. Anyway, that's moving out into the Atlantic and that's just weakening and dissipating whenever there's anything British related here in studio. He's like, oh, I bet Will knows him. Yeah, <laughs> Little comparison between Nigel and Will. Oh yeah, they're both full of hot air. So oh, there you oh, go. Oh Will. <laughs> both warm I core am systems. So sorry. <laughs> we love you, Will. We do love you, Will. We love you, Will. Yeah. Uh, you do need to play darts with me though soon, Will. Forty percent chance of development from that little disturbance off the coast and a 70% chance way out there off the coast of Africa. So we can't really look to the tropics for any moisture either, unfortunately. 76 in the morning tomorrow. By noon, having some fish and chips at lunch, 90 degrees, <laughs> not too hot outside. The 98 for the high temperature will be triple digits in a few locations, especially uh, closer to the Rio Grande and just south of town. 20% chance late Sunday, 30% on Monday. Monday, we could be raising those odds. This sort of digressed into a will weather. Wednesday. Yeah, sorry, yeah. folks. <laughs> I like it. Say. <laughs> the buzz is coming up next. Nigel. To the buzz and to the sphere in Las Vegas. They say this eye-powered robot will welcome guests into its atrium. Officials at the music and entertainment venue say her name is Aura, and she's their spokesbot at the sphere. Freaky. Yeah, promoters say she'll interact with guests and become part of the overall entertainment experience. The company claims she's the most advanced robot of her kind. Representatives also say the Sphere venue itself will, quote, redefine the future of live entertainment. I mean, it's, it looks pretty cool just from the outside. It's, yeah, it's cool to look at. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay, scientists say that the oldest aquarium fish in the world is likely older than they originally thought. An Australian lungfish named Methuselah arrived at the Steinhardt Aquarium in San Francisco in November 1938. Until now, scientists estimated she's currently about 84 years old. Yeah, but using DNA testing of a sample of one of her fins, they've determined she's 92 years old and could possibly be up to 101. Methuselah has outlived more than 230 other fish during her time at the aquarium. Yeah, I'd say That's, so. It is a fish story right there. I'd <laughs> say it's not just a fish story. Okay, th this is the album you were referring to. The Consumer Product Safety Commission has released an album called We're Safety, Now Haven't We? It has several songs with safety-related messages aimed at kids and young adults, like reminding kids to wear their helmets and putting your phone away while driving. Ever wonder where your taxpayer money's going? The album can be found on the Consumer Product Safety Commission's website and YouTube channel. The songs could eventually pop up on Spotify and Apple Music. I'm told the very first song is Protect Your Noggin. And look at this album cover. Are members of the Consumer Product Safety Commission singing? I don't know. Right. Our producers listen to it, though. Yeah. We'll be right back.